first. <laughs> so the Shipibo language is a language that belongs to the linguistic family of the Pano. Mm -hmm. It's called, it's a Panoan language and is spoken by roughly about 35,000 people according to the last Peruvian census. Uh, more or less 35,000 people identify as Shipibo Conibo, but what is happening to the language, it, it's that it's being lost throughout the generations. Mm -hmm. So even if people identify as Shipibo or have Shipibo parents in the census, they don't identify necessarily as speaking the language. So we can say that it's a language that is close to, it's an endangered language. Really, it's an endangered language, um, not in the most extreme levels of danger, but it's definitely being lost uh, across the generations. And I think the beauty of this language, as many Amazonian languages are, is that it is born out of the geography of the Amazonian jungle and born out of the practices of the medicine and the dieta and you can really see how it's a language that, as many languages do, comes from the geography and the land that it was born in. It's um, a very, I think, beautiful language born out of tradition, born out of medicine, born out of contact with the plants, with the animals. And there are many words, for example, that are very uh, belong exclusively to this language that are not very easily translatable. Mm -hmm. And the beautiful thing is that as many people uh, encounter the medicine and encounter this practice of dieta and encounter the Icaros, it's a language that's being spread and being shared with the global community. And I think that is an advantage because it, it's what makes Shipibo culture strong. Mm -hmm. yeah? And to be practiced because it becomes widely appreciated mm -hmm. by the people around the world. Uh -huh. Yeah. And and there is no written language, right? Oh, I was about to say yeah. that. There is no written language. It's actually an oral language. And the first people that alphabetized the language were really the missionaries. Mm -hmm. no? And they used uh, an alphabet that was meant to transition from Shipibo to Spanish. Mm -hmm. So make it easier for Shipibo to acquire the Spanish language. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's a completely oral language and I think um, this is why uh, many people don't even write their own language. Mm -hmm. But because it's so oral, I think there's something beautiful about the language that has very beautiful sound. No, it's very onomatopoeic. Like, <laughs> Ay, va que usted era medicina, ¿verdad? Ya un ama que hace medicina. Y que viga, da que tan iba a que. Y, ja, ja, que en tan a que medicina, ¿verdad? Que como usted era de esfuerzo, ayuda a mí. Ajá, and it gets in this way uh, transmitted from generation to generation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the Ícaro language is really like the medical jargon of the Shipibo people. Mm -hmm. um, it's like in languages you have a common or day-to-day -day language, that's the language that you speak every day with your friends or your family. But when we get to the medical sphere, the traditional sphere, uh, it's like we are talking about specialized language. We're talking about even specialized ways of constructing words and I think the very beautiful thing about traditional medicine and Icaros is that you know when we think of medical jargon in the Western world it tends to be very dry and scientific and systematic mm -hmm. but for the sheep people uh, the medical jargon is the highest level of poetry wow. that you can really access no, no. We work with Marcus uh, sharing the language and talking to our students. That's something that we really bring up is the poetry 
their expression and their use of the language in a playful and beautiful way but also honest and sincere and telling stories and using the imagery and using all these spiritual visions that come to us through our dreams, through our ceremonies. So the Icaros, I believe, are one of the highest levels and forms of poetry mm -hmm. in the Shipibo language that is alive today. And they are really informed by the life of whoever is singing. Mm -hmm. For example, a grandfather who mm -hmm. has grown up and been raised in a very traditional way, um, encountering ancient spirits and ancient vocabulary, mm -hmm. he or she will speak and sing very differently. And so I remember once this grandfather would sing about all these spirits from the water and, and sing about like uh, the spirits that are in the puddles of water that are left after the river dries and how all of these have these energies that can make people sick uh -huh. and why because he has had experience with those and heard those from his father etc etc uh -huh. but then maybe a younger person or someone that grew up in the city or someone that is learning medicine in a different context they will encounter different spirits or they uh -huh. will encounter uh, they will have a different experience. So, for example, when you're in the process of it, you can say Bain King, no? Mm -hmm. Especially with these claiming words, Bain King or Shaman King, really, mm -hmm. no? Yeah. What is the difference? Shaman King uh, is done, no? Shaman King. Mm -hmm. So, I think this is something that really influences the Icaros, no? our life experience, what we live, what we dream, where we grew up. Um, and another thing is that at the same time as the Icaros are very poetic, they can also be very systematic mm -hmm. and very, you know, precise. It's like singing with a laser, mm -hmm. no, with a laser beam. And the more you are trained in the theater world, the more precise your ikara is. And this is why it's like poetry, because in poetry, every word has the right a meaning. Place. It's in the right place, it's the right word, and it's having the precise effect that you want. And it's the same thing with the ikaros. It's the same thing. And so you train yourself because many of the Shipibo people, when they sing, they're improvising. Uh -huh. like, or they are singing to the moment. They are present in the moment and they're singing to what they are feeling and seeing and experiencing. And from that moment, even if they have some things prepared and some routines, but in that moment, it's like, how can you sing to that moment from the truth of your heart? Mm -hmm. And, from, mm -hmm. and with the precise words mm -hmm. that, you know, will really bring, move the audience mm -hmm. and make them feel the so here you can say that it's not only the vibration that heals, but also the language that heals. It's also the language, it's everything, no? So it, it is these uh, many parts. So we have the vibration, very, very important. Mm -hmm. And then we have the language, mm -hmm. like how do we accompany the vibration with the language? And then we have the melody, mm -hmm. which is what we spoke about, no? If someone is feeling with a very strong energy, like you have to sing with the melody that goes according mm -hmm. to what the person needs. Mm -hmm. yeah? So 
the whole thing will build the power of the ikara and it's an art and a science at the mm -hmm. same time because it's precise yeah the more you train the more sensitive this is why plants make us grow in sensitivity because the more sensitive we are the more we can feel ourselves mm -hmm. feel others and from there be more precise Yura pare panaki No marunki kai no marunki kai iru simai ke ka iru simai ke ka Medi koyon pare ba medi koyon pare ba arunki kai no marunki kai Koshe yon paribano, koshe yon paribano.